Firstly, I would say, in my, in my view, self-help is a postmodern phenomena. And what I mean by that is that, which is perhaps why uh, th th that self-help, as you said, Yoan, it doesn't really have the, it doesn't question the oughts, it doesn't question uh, what's driving us towards the point B, from, from A to B. So it's it's purely focused on the systems. It's, it's like a ruthless pragmatism. It's just get it done. This is how you get it done. Uh, apply these frameworks, you know, James Clear's Atomic, James Clear's Atomic Habits or whatnot, right? Uh, my critique of self-help comes in two ways. Firstly, in a more existential sense, and then afterwards, certainly my political critique where I critique the ideology of self-help. Okay, so the, 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 the existential one is rather interesting because Here's what I, I I put it this way, right? So I, as you were talking, it reminded me of Camus' quote from The Shoot, The Fool. Uh, he says, uh, a man, um, <clears throat> sorry, a man wants to earn money in order to be happy and his whole effort and the best of a life are devoted to the earning of that money. Happiness is forgotten. The means are taken for the end. So I'll just replace money with self-help there, right? It'll go like this then. A man wants to, Practice self-help in order to be happy. And his whole effort and the best of a life are devoted to the earnings of that, mon of that money or to the, uh, to the practice of self-help. Happiness is forgotten. The means are taken for the end. Now, happiness is forgotten. Again, happiness is not, not a big deal here. But let's assume in the context of this quote, the happiness is an like, ought. I ought to be happy. It's the B the person's moving towards. So within this, though, what I've seen with self-help is that existentially speaking, the means are taken, the, the means replace the end. The means don't become just a means to an end. They become the end in themselves. <laughs> so what happens is when people get obsessed with self-help, like, like all their life, <laughs> all their life, all they do is try to optimize everything. They yeah. try to, uh, you know, they try to meditate, run cold showers, read, read myriad self-help books. In fact, I saw this really interesting statistic. Uh, I can't pull it up now because I got to find it. But it said that majority of people who buy, so majority of people that buy self-help commodities, so like self-help products, whatever, courses, books, all that, they're generally re a really high number, like 80 or 90% they're recurring customers. It's the same people that keep buying this stuff. Because what happens is, I think people get to use a Lacanian term, um, a sense of Jewish zones from just the act of engaging in self-help. You know, I'm going to read 10 self-help books, despite all of them virtually saying the same thing. Like, it's not that advanced. It's just like basic stuff. You don't have to be a genius to, you know, have, have habits, be disciplined, have some framework, have a calendar, have a to-do list. I mean, no shit, Sherlock. You don't have to be a genius to know that, right? And uh, so, but then people get, like, you know, what's this? Tiago Forte is a second brain thing where you like optimize it. Everything's productive. From the from the processes itself, people find a great sense of pleasure, although I would use a more uh, psychoanalytical term, Jewish zones, where then it's not, there's no, there's no real, they, they really aren't really doing anything apart from optimizing their lives. So apart from self-helping, you know, and that, that yeah, becomes yeah. the whole life. And it's, it's a kind of a sad existence if you think about it, because like, there's no uh, creative outlet. There's nothing, there's no creation per se. It's just this like very, in a, in a peculiar sense, narcissistic obsession with the self. No, and that's, that's and my, my question, the way I like to always think is like, I, I like to think of, we humans, you know, I'm a Hegelian. So we're historical beings, right? I, imagine if uh, Napoleon or Churchill spent, uh, you know, <laughs> six, seven hours a day focused on self-help. Like if, imagine Napoleon before he went to, you know, was trying to beat the Nazis, woke up in the morning, meditated, you know, had the cold shower and did all these things. We would probably all be speaking German and you and I probably we wouldn't even be born. We'd probably be in some, our parents would have died in some concentration. Well, one, one would imagine Napoleon to have been more effective, but I don't think that would be the case. He would I don't have, think it would be. You would have not stopped reading. And yeah, you see a, a self-help <laughs> ideologue would say, oh, if, if Napoleon or if, Churchill did all these optimization things, they would be even better at that, whatever they did as leaders, let's say. I disagree. I think the greatness that doesn't come from this very little tweaks, optimization here and there, it comes from 
something even beyond what you can articulate. It comes from to use a Nietzsche term from trying to be that Ubermensch, you know. So, so it it, it comes from a, a in some sense the greatness comes from some kind of insanity. There's like a a, a sense of insanity mm. to what they're doing, and it's a, a self help. It, ruins all of that it makes you a very tepid vanilla kind of person and that's why i'm going to be totally honest man most people i talk to who are hyper obsessed with self-help and i used to be one of these people so i kind of know a few people who i i used to be a part of a pyramid scheme at mlm unfortunately i got sucked in as a kid so i, I still know a few people who are in that circle great people love the people oh, well, we all do we all do yeah yeah every, everyone's in a part of amway right it's just like I, <laughs> I think bill clinton was a part of amway so anyway Lovely people, but man, they're so boring. All they do is obsess over like, focus on your dreams, your goals. Yeah. So I, I think the interesting yeah. thing is they're very, uh, you can say they're boring, but they're also very obnoxious in a, in a very interesting way. Oh, I mean, look, okay. Uh, I can't speak for being obnoxious because I'm an ob- obnoxious oh, guy. No, that's, that's true. That's it's true. I think, I, think, I, think this, yeah. I need to be a bit tough about that. So, 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 okay, so maybe uh, just what I wanted to mention earlier as well, and you will tie here. It's like, uh, how self-help used to look like was was morals, right? It's a lot of morals and ethics. But it, then that wasn't the end alone. You weren't I, 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 would, I would say it's phrenesis, to use a term by Aristotle. Phrenesis, kind of this like pragmatic wisdom. Pragmatic but, wisdom, yeah. yeah Aristotle yeah. uses some phrenesis, which is like a very interesting... Yeah. I haven't uh, heard of that one. So yeah, that's, that's, that's It's like how to engage in the world as a virtuous yeah. person. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's that's right, and and yeah. I think that's that's the like it's it's along the lines of how to conduct yourself. It's virtue, right? But it's actually that's like in that case, it's not the means becoming the ends. Like I think the means are still the means, and the ends are still the ends, right? Like when you look at it, people um, in ancient times, like you, there's no way to parade that you are someone who's, uh, you know, someone who's thought about all of these things and someone who does all of these routines on the side. Because only, they're still parading things. Well, right? they can only embody it, really. I mean, the only way to be a virtuous person is exactly embody exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. As, so the, think, as in think, the, the self-help people can very... I mean, I mean we, we all do this. I do this with philosophy, for instance. It's to use a term by Judith Butler, performativity. We, we show that, look at me, I'm doing all these things. I'm, 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 I'm performing the role of what a self-help person would typically do, which is, yeah productivity meditation all of this but then but then that's it's a bit unfair to say it's just something self-help people do i think in post which is why i said it's a postmodern phenomena in postmodern culture uh everyone does that we are all performing something we are all putting on a performance uh because we we, we live in this kind of groundless existence our being has no well, true, true, but um, post- i have one more point i make on on the on the political side can i i'll make that point and i'll let you go is, is, is that all right uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, or do you want do you want do you want to respond though to the the point? Well, actually, actually, maybe I'll go first because you probably take a while with that one, knowing you. Um, oh no, I mean, no, no. This is actually no. I think I already the, the okay. To be honest, the existential point for me is the important one because the political one. It's not just self help. I think it's given given our given our current milieu our ideology and many things connect to this. But I would put it simply, I think self help is also a conformist category because. It's this idea that this connects to the whole therapism, all the conversations we've been having before. The idea that, oh, focus on myself. Don't critique society. You know, the Jordan Peterson thing, clean your room before you criticize the world. Uh, focus on myself, focus on improving, focus on my immediate life, getting my finances in order, getting my personal life, uh, my personal, whatever, health, wealth, whatever in order, spiritual life, whatever you may call it. And, and don't critique structures. Don't be critical of neoliberalism, the capitalism, whatnot. So it's it's the moment one steps into the ideology of self-help, you've already taken on many um, ideological, there's a lot of ideological baggage that comes along with it. It's it's not, an, so self-help certainly is not an apolitical thing. It's not something that just exists, again, independently. This is within our culture. So, which is why that, account, again, it's, the funny thing is that existentialist critique, I think it, it perfectly connects to the political critique because the existentially, existentially, when you replace the, uh, the 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 means, when the means become the end, then there's no real end, right? Because it's a postmodern phenomena. The end of, let's say, again, to we want to create a more just society. We want to create a society where there are less people suffering, where we want to create a society where there's more love, let's say. We want to create a society which is perhaps a, lo- a, a lot more like what Christ taught us. 
none of those things matter because the end is already there. The end is engaging in these self-help things and not critique society. So then there's no, there's no, it's like this very kind of like, yeah, it's, it's a slave category. It's like this tepid existence where you never question society. You kind of live this um, zombie existence in many ways, you know, which is, which is really interesting because if you look at people who are engaged in self-help, you're right. They are rather obnoxious. You think that, man, the people who are getting things done, they're so productive. But no, sometimes, sometimes you should step back and question why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, doing just do it the way Nike says it itself is a ideological imposition. It's an injunction. <laughs> do what you know. Do what. Do what, man. Uh, but that's why I think they they they're both. It, it there are many ex existential drawbacks, but certainly there are many political uh, drawbacks of self help pism, the ideology of self help.